guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Nicole. I love to 3D print, mold make, candle make, and do everything creative. And if you are interested, I would really appreciate if you like and subscribe and support me and my channel. It is much appreciated. And today we're gonna to be talking about 3D printing. And if you're new to 3D printing, I'm gonna break it down, take it a step back, and kind of educate you on the two main types of 3D printing. We're gonna be comparing and contrasting FDM and SLA. And FDM is known as a filament-based printing and you can use various types of thermoplastics to make your desired model. SLA printing is a little bit different. It's called stereolithography and it's using a laser or a light to cure a photopolymer such as resin. <laughs> I firstly want to show you one of the products that I have on my website and it is this little notebook. It is inspired by my dear friend that always tells me to stop procrastinating and get back to work. I love the cat because it's so colorful. It just, it's very bold and the straight face kind of just makes the quote. I'll open it and show you guys what it looks like. It has this plastic wrapping on it and it has a matte finish. If you're interested, please check out my website. I am going to be posting a lot more items on there. Okay, back to the video. So if you're pondering on the idea of which type of 3D printer you want to get, I'll break it down for you with the pros and cons of each printer. Starting with resin-based printing, whew, it is messy. It is messy, 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 messy. For me, I'm like, no, I'm a clean person. I'll have a clean setup. It'll be fine. I'll just wear gloves and lay something down and it'll be fine. No, resin gets everywhere. Even if you have one designated station where you have your resin, it manages to just spill or drip. That is probably one of my main pet peeves with SLA printing is liquid resin is just so hard to contain in one area and you get better with time you know how to clean and do the certain procedures that go around 3d printing with resin but it's completely the opposite from fdm fdm you take your spool of filament throw it on top there and you press go filament based printing is definitely a lot cleaner and easier to work with but there are some exceptions if your print fails and you have filament spewing everywhere yes it's going to be messy but it is easier to clean up you do have a failed print with your resin you do have to remove the particles in the resin tank and that can also be a pain so the next point in my list is cost of materials and initially the elego mars was a very cheap purchase but over time, it's been very costly to maintain and buy the materials for it. Whereas for the Prusa, it was a bigger upfront cost, but to buy the filaments, it's been very, very cheap to print on a regular basis. So the materials that you'll need for resin-based printing is a photopolymer resin, and this could be PLA, ABS. I mainly work with ABS because I really like the durability. The only issue that I find with these resins is that they smell so, 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 so bad. They are stinky, they stink up the room, you get a headache when you smell them and I live in a apartment so when I'm resin printing it stinks up the whole place and the fact that it's negative 20 outside is hard to just open up a window and let the fresh air in because it's so dang cold outside too. You do kind of have a spectrum with resins. You can buy and invest in a higher quality resin and it won't have those fumes and those smells but this bottle is already $50 and it doesn't really last that long. This bottle is half the size and it was around $30, but again, they do not last long. This only has 16 ounces and it goes by pretty quick. The materials that you'll need when you're resin printing is replaceable FEP sheets. Those are those clear sheets that you have on your tank. If you don't want to replace them, you can always purchase a new tank. But again, that does come with a cost with Elegumars. I believe I spent around $50 for two tanks, which is really not that bad when you compare to other printers. It, um, 
it is a good replacement, but you have to take very good care of these tanks and the film because it does scratch very easily and if you have too many scratches on it, prints will not come out uh, as they should. It will have layer lines, it might have some missing parts, and it just won't be a complete piece, which is what you want to steer away from. Other materials that you'll need will include isopropyl alcohol, IPA, and you need to get that at a very high percentage, definitely over 95, just so you can wash your models. Washing them is essential because you do want to get the residual resin off and prepare your 3D print for curing. For the materials for the filament-based printing, you need like I said, filament. And you can get various types of filaments. You can get ABS, PETG, PLA, nylon, the list goes on. And when it comes to printing with a Prusa or any other filament-based printing, you do need to maintain your printer. And this includes getting different nozzles or you want to replace the EI sheet on top. You can do that. For me, um, my Prusa is actually down at the moment, so I had to get a replacement thermistor so I can change that manually. With Prusa, they're so good because they have all the information online and they break it down step by step. Their manual is so clear and straightforward. It allows you to get the job done very effectively and efficiently. So besides your maintenance pieces, your filaments, I recommend getting a form of build plate adhesive and this could be either a glue stick or if you have hairspray, it's not really recommended just because it can impact the functionality of your printer. I would recommend getting something that's specifically made for 3D printing and this is what I've been using lately. It's called Magigoon. It is so so good at adding that layer of adhesion so that when you have your first few layers of your 3D print, it is literally guaranteed to stick. I do not have any issues with using this. It is great. The only thing is sometimes it's hard to actually get the product out, but if you squeeze it, it it's fine. That was my number one issue when I started printing. I could not keep the prints on the bed. Now I have no issues. It does take a little bit of practice, some background knowledge of 3D printing, and some, some ability to make some tweets in the slicer before you print to actually get a successful print. But when you really practice and you try and you take the steps that it takes to add that build plate adhesion, you are setting up yourself for a successful print. The third thing on my list is surface quality. It is very distinguishable, the differences between resin printing and filament-based printing. Before you have a resin printer, you're like, you know what? Filament printing is good enough. There's no issues. It has enough detail. But when I started resin printing, I was astonished by the level of quality that is so beyond filament-based printing. It it blew my mind. There are ways to make changes and increase the quality of your filament print and this is lowering the layer height of your prints. So you can print it at 0.3 which is quite large and it will not have as much detail. It will print faster but you will see the layer lines more and it won't be the best. But if you want the highest quality, you can go 0.05 millimeters and you will get a very, very nice surface finish. The only thing with that, it is a very time consuming. However, with the resin base printer, you get prints that are beautiful. The next thing on my list is build volume. Resin printers typically have a very small build plate and build volume and I'm not sure why this is. It could be because of the cost of materials needed or the size of the laser or light that's needed that is an issue. However, most printers that are affordable for hobbyists and that middle ground level have very small build plates and you can get a resin printer that has a bigger build volume however this is going to be on upwards to 10 to 15 to 20 thousand dollars and I don't know about you but I don't have that sitting around the Elegu Mars and unfortunately the build plate is only I believe five by three which is very limiting if you want to print a bigger object but with 
filament printers, you do have a little bit of leeway. They are not the biggest. However, you can get printers that are 12 by 12 by 24. But um, my purse over here is a 9 by 8 by 8, I believe. And it is definitely good enough for me. I do not need a bigger build plate or build volume than that. I do wish, however, I could afford a larger resin printer, but I am still happy with what I have and it does do its job. 3D printing takes time. If you are looking to get a printer that is fast, you can get something out of it in, you know, an hour and it's this big, beautiful object. No, that is not it, you are mistaken. 3D printing takes quite a bit of time. And when I compare the two, resin printers are definitely faster. And this is because a light shines on the resin tank and it instantly creates a layer. But with filament printers, you have one nozzle that moves in a circle or in a certain direction and it goes over and over and over that one area. And that could take, depending on how big your, your print is, it could take maybe 10 minutes for a layer. So do keep in mind that post-processing your resin prints do take time as well. And washing and curing can sometimes take up to half an hour, depending on how big your print is. Not all fun and games. If you want to make a large print on a filament printer, it could take up to three days. Depending on your urgency on your print, you can up the layer height, but again, you do lose your quality. My next point is noise. If you're an apartment like me, you can't run your CNC day in and day out. As much as I want to, I can. But when it comes to 3D printing, I find that resin printing is so quiet because there's not much that happens. With my filament printer, I do have to kind of oil some gears up and take a look at her, but she can be a little loud sometimes and I definitely do not recommend leaving it on overnight when you're trying to sleep and you're in a small confined area. If you're in a big house and you have it downstairs, you're fine. But if you have it right near your room or in your room, which I also don't recommend, then you're definitely gonna hear it. Overall, I love both my printers. I also do have a snap maker and these are near and dear to my heart. If you're on a budget, you can definitely make it work. The Gumars is a great starter resin printer and the Prusa or the Creel T are great options for entry level hobbyist 3D printers in the filament thermoplastic area. I know I spewed a lot of information to you, but Take some time, do your research, and figure out what you want to achieve with your printer. If you have any questions, you can leave it down in the comments. I will definitely answer them as best as I can. But if you're looking for a printer, it is one of the best investments you can make because they're so fun to use and you can print literally anything you want. And it's so fun. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys next week with a new video.